morning. Terminal B, LaGuardia. Got the blue and gold behind us. Must be a tough job. It's gonna be a good day. Here we go. What's your first impression of the new uh, terminal? It's pretty clean. With the clouds up top. It's giving me JFK vibes. Like Terminal 1 JFK vibes, but now we gotta look for American. Look for the other two. There they are, I see them. Tell me what's going on here. Why can't you put anything in your pockets? What's going on? You got no bag. Where's, where'd we go here? Man, you got no pockets. Yeah, you got no pockets. Oh shit. Must be nice I'm working. Man of the world. <laughs> yeah. You're a global citizen, aren't you? Yeah. I'll make I'll make shorts out of grass and, and yarn. <laughs> I don't know where to go. Probably where it says okay. <laughs> this is the way an airport should be. Yeah. Terminal B, LaGuardia, it's like Looks high end. Can't believe it looks like this, but they got the new. He doesn't have his ID. Oh my God! He left his ID. In the back. You left your ID. We're literally two seconds going up to pre-check here. Oh my God! Your knees aren't bleeding. They bleed, baby. They bleed. Let's see. Let's see how it looks over here. This is the old LaGuardia, old Terminal B. Say hi. Say hello to old, old Ryan's uh, fans Please and followers. Leave. Thank you, thank you. Let's see. What's that say? No check bags. Who are you waiting on over here? We're waiting on Nicholas Guido, who happened to bust my child about not having pockets, but this dude is still not through security because he don't have no free check. He's a rook. He doesn't know what he's doing. Game. We ain't got no brain. <laughs> no pockets all day. No pockets all day. How is he going <laughs> to... Look at dad. Dad? Come on now, dad. <laughs> they put balloons for us. Wow. They knew we were coming. So the new airport, the new terminal looks pretty cool. It looks like I'm stepping off the plane and somewhere in Europe. You know, Estonia or something. Cause this is how it all looks in all Europe, these new airports. Cause it's LaGuardia needed that makeover and they finally got it. And here they are, they got all these stores that nobody will ever go into. A couple new food places, show you, turn you around. So, this is the first time I've ever held a camera like this. I have no <laughs> clue what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Out with the old, and with the new. Hello. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on, I want to take a picture of mine. <laughs> ah! I don't know what I'm doing, but this is where I used to work, guys. This is why all of us are flying today. Because of my flight benefits. Now times have changed with COVID and I had to take a buyout. But I'm still going to fly. I'm still going to travel. It's going to be fun. Look at you, you seasoned traveler. You know what you're Come doing on. here. You know what you're doing. I don't know what to do. Come on. Travel hat. Uh, 101. You got those, the seasoned vets versus the rookies. Yeah, we're the rookies. Here they are. <laughs> no pockets, no orders. No pockets, no orders. They'll be dying by the time we get to Alaska. Mr. No Pockets over here. Look at them. Leaving all the stuff around. Phone, wallet. One of the prerequisites to come to Alaska is you need a negative test. So we got, we got E here on the phone. Anyone could email that. <laughs> we got one for four right now. We got three out of four still waiting. It's <laughs> got no pockets. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Here we go. What is this 
idiot doing on the floor? Yeah, Are you okay? Is right. <laughs> Are you okay? Is this your first time on an airplane? Oh my god. He was just trying to get comfortable. Just trying to get comfortable. Guys, can't take this guy anyway. Anyway. What am I telling you? What am I Tell him about your first class experience. Where are we? I've been in first class before. Well, just tell him about it now. I got drunk. Free <laughs> alcohol. It's, it's open bar and you're gonna have beer. Who does it? Not me. First time on first class. I liked it. Seats are a little bigger. That wasn't even a real first class. That wasn't a real first that class. Was like, you get, that was nothing. You gotta get the bed. Yeah, I need, I need the bed. I need that like going to Saudi Arabia shit. We're on the search for some deep dish pizza but landed in Chicago. We gotta make two hours so we go to Alaska. These guys are going too. Get pizza. Yeah, we're going. Yeah. 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 You gotta go to Alaska? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here, red deals. I'm gonna try out the deep dish. God. Yours is not looking so hot. I can tell the aesthetics oh at least one. Mine is not looking terrible, but here we are. One bite, everybody knows you. Everybody knows you. It's not flat, but a little bit. You're just steaming, mine's cold. Nah, I just, I just burned my head off my mouth. First of all, I'm looking so, so hot. A 1.2. 1.2. This ain't no sauce. You call the sauce? Ah, shit. Three. Three? Three? Okay. That's uh, a rookie score. It's a rookie score. That's, that is a rookie score. I'm going with the same New York pizza. Take me home. So we landed in Alaska, about eh, six, six, seven hour flight from Chicago, wasn't that bad. Hey, with the, you gotta open up an app and fill out this declaration form with all this information about if you got tested within 72 hours or five days. Of course we got tested before. I'll show you me and McKenna getting tested together. Your dashboard yet? Yeah. I, it Here we go. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> Super nervous. Yeah. Third time's a charm. <laughs> oh my oh, god. <laughs> Fill it out, get in this big ass line, someone asks you a bunch of questions. Better than all the other times. Now they got a little bit of something going on. Obviously everyone's wearing the mask. They got people asking questions. No temperature checks. They still ask you questions about if you come in contact with anybody or when you got tested, where you're gonna quarantine, all the other good stuff. So finally a little progression after months. Finally takes Alaska to actually put it all together. But off to uh, city center now. All right, Frank. Peach review, where I don't know where we are. We'll bite everyone into us and see what we got here. Floppers. 
Well, we'll go on the last one, half an hour. Pretty fucking with pizza. I'm going 6.2 like the Richter scale. Oh, I'm shut the block. <laughs> Pretty good. I'm not trying. You're not, you're not trash. I mean, you're kind of trash. You trash your basketball. You trash. You trash your running. He thinks he's faster than me. No, he's not. No, he's not. I, I know he's not fast. I. You won't, come on. I got my. I don't. I don't have my shoes on. Fuck. I was gonna say I have my shoes on. I'll go to the end. I'll hold the camera. What, what size do you wear? What size? No, just on the way. On the way. You want me to run it? I want to embarrass you. From here. From here to the fucking uh, the brewery. Oh, I probably could dust you. These guys are racing. <laughs> hey, victory! You actually had him for a little bit there. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna take him. <laughs> Did you pull a hammy? Did I? Yeah. Vinny has no chance. He's got his fucking... Vinny has no chance. No, I saw him blow by. It's a nice, dark side of root beer. Yes, root beer. This guy... Oh, I should have just asked her to make... These guys... Whatever I want. They good. Do you like any of them so far? Yeah, they're yeah. so far. <laughs> One meatball, four dudes. Who are gonna take a shot? I guess that's the celebration. Woo! <laughs> Good morning. It's like 8.46 in the morning. We just checked out uh, the Captain Cook Hotel in downtown Anchorage. Uh, we had a good night last night. Just watched the sunset at like 10.30 at night. That was pretty wild. A real good sunset too at uh, one of the breweries. Can't find these guys. These guys are supposed to get the car. Now I can't find them. Oh, there they are. I see them all over there. Just left Anchorage. We're heading to Whittier. Is that how you say it? Whittier. Whittier. We're going through the Anton Anderson Memorial Tunnel. Apparently, it's the longest tunnel in North America. It's 2.5 miles. One lane tunnel only open for what? An hour, half hour each for each way to go. So, built in World War II. Pretty interesting. We're about like 10 miles from it, so we'll see. But boys are ready to jet ski. You ready? He doesn't know how to swim. This guy doesn't know how to swim. He's going on a jet ski in Alaska. This guy's afraid of whales. Moby. Yeah, you. Yeah, no, uh, no Moby. Dick. Also, in route, <laughs> peering out the left side of my window, we come across, you guessed it, a big moose. I would say this is a success so far. We had a nice morning breakfast at the uh, Snow Cafe, and uh, we'll keep you posted. Emergency? You guys can go down lean. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Bye. Lane three. Lane three. Right, right. Come on, you turn. Watch out. I don't want to hit the bird.
So we just talked to probably half the town that lives in that building over there. 200 people, 15 floors. It's crazy. This is an old army barracks. This is an old army town. And during the winter time, half the people leave here. It's pretty much all businesses and everything like that that are all seasonal. I don't know if you can see it or not, but pretty insane. There's a one way in, one way out kind of tunnel. It's nuts. We're about to go jet skiing though. I'm pretty excited. So we'll get back to you after that. So when we were hearing about this building where all 200 people in this town live, the guy stands up behind us. He's like, oh yeah, I live over there too. Me and all these other 200 people. So we're sitting there talking to him and he tells us, yeah, you know, every once in a while, like, the mayor comes down over here, too, and he stops in, like, as if he's, like, some big deal or something. It just really makes you wonder what's going on in these parts. We're sitting here in Prince William Sound in Alaska and we're looking at this giant glacier. It's goddamn amazing. It's amazing. And we just heard a big, big, like thunder just went off. And all of a sudden you look over and you see a little bit of ice fall off and then a whole slab just falls off. Like lightning and thunderstruck. Crazy. Craziness. Good morning, everyone. We are staying at the beautiful Resurrection, Resurrection Lodge on the bay. Just want to show you guys what we're working with here. <clears throat> Absolutely gorgeous. This is Alaska. Let me go get you guys a, a little view of uh, Charmant and Vinny's room here. Let's do a little peeky peeky. Well, you can see Charmant in there. Still racked out. <clears throat> and this is their view off their deck. Last minute fishing action over here. Finally convinced them to go on the boat. I had to get a one day fishing license. My New York one didn't count. Oh, she broke your heart! She broke your heart! 
we're gonna see how this goes. I don't know Alaskan etiquette, but uh, where I come from, somebody buys you a drink. They fucking cheers that one. So we're gonna do that, and uh, we'll check back in in a couple minutes and see how it goes. Come on, man. Three, 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 three. What are we doing? Three, 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 three. three. I'm last. I'm definitely last. Never have ever been black. Wait. Oh! <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> That's a... That was completely... <laughs> I love... Too easy! Yeah. All of you. If you're like Vinny, I feel like you, you lived in New Jersey. Like, even if you haven't lived in New Jersey, this still counts. This you still counts. If it gets to me. What? I feel like it's still counts. Come on, put your finger down. Damn it. Hold Okay. Right now it's Never have I ever been white. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I've never met you until the moment I've seen you, and now I've known. And you are the sole deserter of this room. And I choose to spend my life. Twice the size it usually is. <laughs> we were rewarded with this beautiful dish for our hard effort. I love it. I love it. You gonna have a bite? Boy, appetite. I'm gonna try some. You had the crabs like yesterday. I had no. I had Alaskan king crab. There you Ooh. go. There you go. Like Guido brought in the smallest one, probably <laughs> like a, a, a four ounce my, fish. My big, the fish I brought in was so big that the bait I used to catch it was bigger than the fish I caught. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. That's not exceptional. Yeah, yeah. But one of the big things was to have the connection with your food. We caught this fish on the boat in Alaska, and now it's on the table two hours later. So, I'll let you know how it is. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Does it smell like seafood? <laughs> oh, come on. No, no, no. Eat it. <laughs> I taste a fish right away. Every fish tastes like fish. I don't care what they say. <laughs> I don't, care. I don't care what they say. Every fish tastes like fish. This one tastes right like now, Every fish has that fish taste. I don't know. I mean, it is cool. I didn't taste it until I swallowed it. Once uh, I swallowed it, it was like fish. Boom. Come on, Nick. It's delicious. It tastes like chicken. Yep. That's really good. This is not fishy. Not at all. No. And it's super fresh. But why is that? This was our view from our place. Checking out now. What time is it? Like 11 o'clock? Uh, 10. Yeah, about 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. We uh, got to wake the other guys up. They're probably sleeping at a late night. They probably were out to, what, 5, 6 in the morning? Five in the morning in this little Alaskan town with all the locals. I saw some Snapchat of someone cracking a whip. Another person getting a haircut. In the bar, I don't know. We'll find out in a little bit what it actually was, but goodbye to this view. So last night, me and uh, Ryan over here ventured slightly out of town to attend the Pit Bar, which is locally known for being a wild time. One of the only places in the area that's open till 5 a.m. past the 2 a.m. curfew one of, the only of all the other bars inside the Seward. So uh, we ventured out to uh, see what it's about, experience the local life, and uh, it lived up to the reputation. The bartenders and owner uh, took out their crackling whip and uh, took it outside and uh, continuously showed us how they use their whip. Uh, we learned that the whip goes at about 732 miles an hour, which Breaks was interesting. Breaks the speed of sound, which creates that whipping noise. Then we, uh, what, we were sitting... What were you thinking when that happened? I don't know. I was just like, this is, I'm in Alaska right now. <laughs> this, this is Alaska. As I sat there watching the bartender say, everyone hold on a second, I'll be right back. I'm going to go out front inside, in front of the bar and start whipping in the parking lot. As random carloads of dudes are pulling up, piling out of pickup trucks, I'm in the remote wilderness in Alaska. Um, and then, you know, if that wasn't enough, the bartender once again disappeared again. And in an attempt to find her, I scanned across the bar to see her standing at the back of the bar, giving a guy a literal haircut with a buzzer, had, you know, the cloth over him, and was giving him a fade. Um, in the back of the bar. it's There's just some things in Alaska that, you know, just make sense, and this is one of them. They also had a sign hanging up uh, on top of the bar, and it said, uh, if you come in with any firearms, you have to turn them over to the bartender. And uh, they were pretty serious about that rule. So, um, yeah, among that, there were many other numerous uh, interesting locals that frequented this uh, lovely establishment. Uh, we had our friend from the other night show up, and uh, bought us, uh, bought myself a uh, shot of tequila. And I think everyone had their money on me puking, but it was this guy that puked on the bar, right through his hands. I just give, left give it my, there. Give my friend a break. He was a nice guy. He was a nice guy. He was a wonderful guy, he and nice he was enough. very compassionate about our fishing trip. He wanted to know how it was. He felt very bad that he couldn't do it. Um, he said he had to work. He said that he was sleeping. He gave us every excuse you could think of. What a wonderful man. He bought me a shot, puked on the bar, looked at the two of us, and walked away. Um, we also saw a group of girls get into a fight over who stole whose cocaine. Um, that was great. Classic. Classic, right? Um, as this is going on, the six-year-old bartender, who is also the owner. Um, the moose. We are passing a moose. Swing around. We are, we're going to pause this and uh, we're going to uh, go see a moose on the side of the road. So uh, we're going to go live. This is, this is what the team's about in Alaska. Hurry up, hurry up. What time is first on Nick, I got you, I got you. All right, so here we are in the middle of the wilderness. Look at that jog. Look at that speed. 
And we're going on a moose track. Holy shit, there's a fucking moose over there. We're going to see a moose. I'm going down there. I'm I know. I'm gonna go down there. No, yeah, let's jump. We're gonna crawl down here. We're gonna, I'm gonna get, let's get a picture with that moose. Let's go down. <laughs> they do. There he is over there. Oh, he's running, he's running. Hey. This is amazing. When they when they talk about like the natural beauty of Alaska, I'm kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been around the world, I've seen it all. But I'm wrong on this one. Alaska truly is like that last frontier stuff because this is amazing. Here we are, side of the road. We just saw a moose. We tried to hop out and catch it, catch a little glimpse of it. And uh, he took one look at us, and he had that one moment, and then he just took off, galloping through the woods over here. But now you can see, with the river in the background, the mountains, look at the mountains go on and on and on. And in some parts you can see like a little bit of the snow on top still. You can see Nick over there doing his, his little wildlife stuff, he lives for this shit. Nick gets to go an extra week out here. We gotta go back. I gotta go sailing with my sister in New Rochelle, learning how to sail. But Nick's spending an extra a week by himself, I think. I think Ryan is staying for an extra couple days. So they get to do a little more of this stuff. But just taking this in is beautiful. This is really something else. You get to see all this in the background. Mind blowing, it really is mind blowing. That's places like this in the United States that, that have this raw, raw beauty. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. it. Humbles you a little bit. It truly does. Boots on the ground. <laughs> Look the moose right in the eyes. And he ran the other way. Show me the bear claw, let's see the bear claw. Holy shit! <laughs> it's fucking... I heard the bear's name was Nick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could've been anybody. We thought we saw a bear paw in the mud and it turned out to be his boot. My boot! He goes by and he goes, wait a minute, that... That's not a bear claw, that's a fucking boot! We were in the middle of breaking it uh, down like scientifically, <laughs> this is how the bear's claw grabs as it walks. Now, it just his fucking foot mushing. And then I leaned over and I was like, look, there's the bottom of my boot with all the markings and everything. And he even said Gore-Tex on the <laughs> Side by side! Oh my god. I still believe it was a bear. Oh. <laughs> wow, that's glamorous. But everybody looks like a rock star with those on, actually. You're a fat guy in a little coat. <laughs> no, I'm a fat guy. Okay. <laughs> You're the fat guy in a little coat. Oh, so we're briefed. Oops. 
We got our jackets. We got the moon boots. Ready to fly in a helicopter. That's a camera? <laughs> I mean, she's not rolling. Look how high that is. That's kind of oh, close yeah. to your head. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Six foot. Six foot. All right, we're doing uh, rock paper scissors to see who doesn't ride with, ride together. So we'll see. All right, this is the final show down here. We are in the loser circle. Shake hands. In my opinion, it's the winner circle. Whoever gets to go in the middle. On the square. Yeah, that's right. Rock paper scissors shoot. Rock paper scissors shoot. Oh! oh. No. <laughs> the biggest loser! Post game interviews. Uh, what happened so, today? It's, it's been a rough trip, you know, I had a rough drinking day the other day. I love it. Can't win a rough paper scissors. It's, uh, hopefully, I turn this thing around. I got, what, six hours left? Studying, training, everything like that. That's how I got where I got. Alright, so. You need to know where to be and at what time to be there, and that's where I was. I was the right place, right time. Well, you're going to Disney World. How do you feel? Uh, first, I'm going to eat a bowl of Wheaties, and then after that, I'm going to Disney World. So, <laughs> feel pretty excited. Cheer it out. Watch your head. <laughs> hey, what duck? You got a duck? <laughs> it's coming close. Oh, he ducked his head. He ducked his head. I'm going to duck too when I'm that close. Yeah, look at him ducking. He's ducking. He's not going in. <laughs> he's still ducking. When he come back, tell him it was like this close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're finished. Punchbowl Glacier. Kurtwood, good, good. Kurtwood? Kurtwood. Kurtwood. Yeah, Kurtwood, Alaska. And we took a helicopter here and we're standing on a glacier in the middle of summer. And it's actually really nice out today. Yeah. And we're going dog mushing. Dog sledding. We got the mush, dogs mush. behind us. Mush, mush. Mush, mush. 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 Mush? You said mush. Mush or mush? I said mush. Mush. You be the judge. We got the dogs behind us. They just ran. McKenna and uh, Guido are out right now. You can kind of see them in the corner over there. They're all the way around. They're going around on their expedition. We got the big dogs over here. We got the little puppies over here. How much uh, food did they say to eat a day? Uh, 5,000 calories a day in the summer and 15,000 in the winter a day. The shit ton of food. McKenna eats about, you know, 7,000, <laughs> but you know. They actually just broke the sled, which is funny. I can't wait to hear what happened. Too much weight on the sled, I guess, and one of the straps. One of the straps broke. The dog went running off. They got him back, but it's kind of funny. But it's beautiful here. What do you think of the helicopter ride? I loved it. Got a uh, views of everything. 
don't know exactly know where I am, but uh, got to see a lot. I'm excited for the dog mushing. <laughs> I'm excited to get on the sled. Very cool, very cool. Can I use the word? Go ahead. Oh no, why is that? You told me! You, 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 you just said it on stage! Okay, well they're going downhill, so let's not get them too excited. All they're right. already going so fast. Alright, so M is the word. Slow. Yes. <laughs> I thought you wanted me to say yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. No, well. <laughs> Um, the worst part about dog mushing is the person gets almost no sleep. So during a race of a thousand miles that takes eight to ten days, you're going to sleep about 13 to 15 hours total. Wow. So extreme sleep deprivation. You're also outside the entire time. So um, cold weather, things like that. So things that we're not meant to be in. Yeah. Um, that can be the worst. The best is you're in the middle of nowhere that nobody can get to unless you get out there on the dog sled. That little, little edge of like danger. You know, that's what I, I like. There's a lot of danger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it's it's just, there's, I mean, have you, have, if you imagine getting on a dog sled and going a thousand miles and it's just you and them. Yeah. I mean, that's just unreal. That's some raw stuff right there. That's like, that's the real deal. That's adventure stuff. It's like Lewis and Clark, you know? Kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's old school. Obviously, like, we know people have been mushing dogs for about 10,000 years in northern wow. climates. So, like, the horse and other parts of the, the world. That's the mode of transportation before vehicles and stuff like that. So wow. very much old school, um, but a very, very connected. You know? Yeah, absolutely. It's like an engine where you just turn it on and you leave it. And then if it breaks, you give it to somebody else to deal with. Right? Yeah, these dogs you got to care about. Yeah, they're living creatures. Absolutely. So, it's been pretty cool.
back at uh, ANC, the airport here in Anchorage. Uh, it's the end of the trip. We just dropped uh, two guys off. They're going on their own little expedition. Another couple days for them. Me and he went back to uh, the brewery. Nice little meal. It's good. But now I'm. He's hopping on a flight at what time? What time are you going? Uh, 9:55 to Chicago, and then an hour and a half layover. Then Chicago to New York. I should land around 11:30 a.m. Eastern Time. It's not bad. Might as well later. Sucks. 11:45. I'm flying into Denver, and then from Denver to LaGuardia. I don't even know what time I get in, but quick layover. But it was a good trip. We had a great time. Saw a lot of shit. Did a lot of crazy adventure stuff. I definitely will travel with these guys again, but until next time, leave the resort.